At what point did you recognize that that culture was the appropriate scope at which to address problems in a time when we hear a lot from specialists? Hmm. That's a good question. What did it take to get me off the hind tit of individualism? What you're asking me. Huh. Well, I don't think anybody moves off the hind tit because they think uh, um, that everything will be better no matter where they go. I think you get off the the hind tit because um, you're utterly exhausted because you can't, you just simply can't, you know. There's not a lot of honor attached to it. If I think about it, I think probably it broke down uh, in the early days of when I worked in the death trade. And I was um, employed by a system that was death phobic. And I, in a miscalculation, thought I was there to help people die. But nobody was there to die. So they didn't want any help to die. They wanted help to not die. That was the basic kind of psychic deal that was being struck every day. And uh, I couldn't do it. It doesn't make me a better person. I'm telling you, I didn't have whatever it took to be able to corroborate the notion that you shouldn't have to die. I couldn't because I was left with the realization you should have to die. And that's what dying is. It's one of life's great shoulds being offered to you like that. And uh, there were absolutely no takers. And somewhere in there, I, I think it hit me that people were trying to exercise their, quote, individual human right to self-determine. And that was probably the entire breakdown of the thing because their exercise of self-determination was basically subverting the natural order of things that says that Every aspect of life sustenance derives from death. I mean, you're farming just outside this window here, and you can see it, that if everything's alive all the time, nothing can grow, because life is not what sustains life. Life is a taker, right? It's not a giver, it's a taker. It has to, it needs all the nutrients as it keeps taking, keeps taking, keeps taking. But it has a, an arc that lasts only so long, and all its takingness eventually collapses back into the ground, if you let it. And that collapse begins the possibility of the not yet living to begin to draw sustenance from that place. It's obvious. Okay, so then you apply it to a palliative care unit where people are dying. Then what's the consequence in every way that it can be imagined for people who've been on the take as North Americans their entire lives in every way that it can be imagined, refusing to pour all of that benefit back into the kind of psychic gene pool of collective life by refusing to die, and by hating death, and by hating everything that it is, and by hating their bodies as their bodies wind down and so forth. What's the consequence? This is not life-affirming to refuse to die and to exercise your personal outlaws. This is life annihilating. And as if our consumptive life is not bad enough and hard enough on the environment, but when finally it's our turn is to give a little back, considering how lucky we've been, we become even more Scrooge-like and hold on even more intensely to what we've been entrusted with. Um, that's what I saw, and somewhere in there, I couldn't do the job, you know. So I just want to say this doesn't make me in any way a, a wise or achieved. Or, I'm telling you I couldn't do the job. That's nothing to be proud of. I literally couldn't do it. And so then I realized this is a very time-limited arrangement. If I'm going to be here, uh, when they catch on to what I'm doing, it'll be over. And it'll end ugly. And it did. And when I changed course... It didn't last for very long, but I, I had a lot of administrative benign neglect. Nobody paid attention for a while because there was notoriety and there was interviews and they just loved that. You know, there was a lot of ink and that was enough. But if they had re read what I was saying, 
they would have started to, the powers that be would have said, wait a second, this guy's not with the program. You know, and that's finally what Diwise became is a, not an expose, not a, not a complaint. It was a, it's a lament. Look what we've set ourselves up for. We're not allowed to stop. And this is supposed to be an act of love. That you owe yourself and your loved ones not to quote quit, you know, and on and on and on. <clears throat> so what's left as a, as a field of operation? when you realize that functioning at the level of the individual turns you into a life coach. Mm -hmm. That's what it does, right? And you're in the customer satisfaction business because you need customers. So then how do you get people? <laughs> you go along with them. And they don't want to age? Fine, let's not age. And they don't want to die and they hate endings? Great, endings are for suckers. So let's... And uh, I just wasn't that guy. So what was left? Well, the collective, you know, and lucky enough to have been born in Canada where we pay for each other's uh, um, poor health, you know, and it's just in the matrix a little bit. Doesn't make us better people because we, we have our equivalent dilemmas, I'm sure. But, but in that case, you grew up that, you know, in that circumstance, you're understanding that you have a basic fiscal responsibility to your neighbors that in times of trouble, uh, you sustain them somehow, you know, through the healthcare system, through your tax dollars. And um, that's, not, that's not challenged. And uh, we're enormously lucky that we have it. And somewhere in there, I suppose, that coalesced inside me as having a sense of responsibility to, to the ignored reality, the collective reality. And... Um, so I simply occupied a, huh, a place that no one was interested in. Is how do we come to how do we come to these things, if it's not personal choice, which it virtually never is. Nobody chooses to die badly. Nobody chooses to collude with the refusal to contribute to the psychic gene pool by it. Nobody does, and nobody benefits from it. And it's all but universal. As a strategy quality of life, all of that, hope, the whole thing. So, uh, so I just took what was left, you know, wondering at this cultural level. And suddenly there's a school about it, you know, the unauthorized history of the West and so on. And uh, next thing I know, you're asking me this question. <laughs>